How's it going guys? Nathan from Nathan's MRE and today we have a very special ration. This one is from the Vietnam area era. This is Food Packet Long Range Patrol Beef Stew Mini Number no. 7. Now this particular meal is a L LRRP or LERP. This is uh, the US Army Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol and they started creating this or this is in the makings in 1956 and this goes all the way through even to present day for the military I'm make sure you focus there and this is a freeze-dried ration now these are the only freeze-dried rations uh, from this era the rest are the the sea rations and the cans uh, in later years they made these instead of olive drab material they're actually in a plastic bag more like a uh, more modern ration usually they were dark green or even like a dark brown color so these LERP groups would go out into the jungle in Vietnam I, I watched a documentary on it here a while back and that's what got me to look for some of these rations I came across one and I picked it up uh, but these guys would go into the jungle and they weren't necessarily there to to look for danger they would try to keep out of harm's way they would gather intelligence they were heavily armed, and from what I've read and what I saw, they wouldn't fire on you unless they absolutely had to. They didn't want to break their stealth, and that's kind of how all this came about. And uh, you know, being a freeze-dried ration, it lasts basically forever. Uh, I don't know what the date on this is. It'll be in the title. You'll be able to know what it is by looking at it right now. I personally have not opened this up yet. We know somewhere between 1959 and 1969, give or take. Uh, can't really find an exact uh, date when they stopped making this particular one. But we're thinking somewhere in the mid-late 60s. So we'll go ahead and get it opened up and uh, see what's inside. It should be interesting. So I did notice that this is a laminated olive drab bag with a foil lining. And it is delaminated but it's not open the inside bag is still sealed but it's just delaminating the plastic off of the foil so i think what we're going to do here we're going to go ahead and slice it open at the top and i can see i don't know we're just going to open it up and see what's going on when we're messing around let me go ahead and slice it ever so gently right at the top Just go ahead and pull her out. See what's going on in here. It's quite the quite the variety of stuff in there. And that is all that is in it. You can see it's just a plastic bag with foil and then olive drab on the outside of it. So I feel kind of bad cutting this open, but man, it's definitely gonna make for a heck of a good video. All right. Starting off with, we have a stimmy dent, which I think this is a little piece of wood that breaks into a toothpick. We'll find that out later. We have a roll of TP for your bunghole, but this is old school TP. We have some olive drab matches. We have a vanilla cream bar. It smells very old. Very old. Man, it smells like, not mothballs, just like old paper. We have a cocoa beverage powder. That ought to be very interesting. We're going to try to get a date off one of these. This is made in Maple Island. Oh, Maple Island Incorporated, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And it says mix, mixed contents with eight fluid ounces, third canteen cup of water. doesn't seem to be a date on this at all let's go ahead and see this is the main entree it's a pretty big main entree this is the beef stew five and a half ounces net this is tear bag open 
at notches, a strack food bag. What is all over this thing? Something leaking? It's like little... You probably can't see that on the camera. There's like little speckles all over it. Almost like cardboard. Very odd. What's going on here? Is... Okay, that's just where you rip it open. So it is still all sealed. Very peculiar. Make sure there wasn't a hole somewhere in it. I don't see a hole in it anywhere. We have an old school Vietnam era spoon. We have... Man. Uh, coffee instant. I guess this all you don't even get a type on it. It's just coffee instant. No type one, two, or three. This is manufactured by the Calistan Industries Landside, Pennsylvania. Mix of eight ounces of water. And we have another coffee. These are both the same. Coffee instant. Coffee instant. Huh, yeah, they're both coffees. Okay, so two coffees in it. We have here, it's kind of remarkable how a ration this old, uh, the contents look the same as even the newer ones. This is a pack of sugar. And it's all loose, it's not a big brick of uh, goo. This is cream substitute, I'm sure that is scary. So that's everything in it. We'll go ahead and see if we can't pick a date off something in here. Okay, so this is what we figured out in this. These don't have any dates on them. I did a bunch of research before I started this video. I just did a bunch more on the laptop. And this is in between 1968 and 1972. There's absolutely no way to tell exactly what year it is, and I hate that. But there's nothing I can really do about it at this point. Um, these early... LRP rations did not have accessory pack. You notice all the accessories you're just kind of throwing in there. So what we're going to do, we're going to set that aside. We're going to set our coffee, our sugar, and our cream substitute off to the side. We're going to get our tray up here. And we'll save this guy for very last. And we're going to, first of all, open up this guy. And like I said before, this is a vanilla cream bar. This is made by Kimball Candy Company, Chicago, Illinois. I was hoping this at least have a date on it, but it just doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't at all. I guess back in the day, they made candy without, uh, without dates on it. Whatever stamp it had on it is no longer. And basically it says it's made with sugar, uh, sorbitrol, not sure what sorbitrol is, so I think it'll probably kill you, uh, vegetable fat, non-fat milk, solids, cocoa, salt, egg, whites, soya protein, and vertas, vertasi, artificial flavor. Emulsifiers, antioxidants, that sounds all kinds of interesting. It just smells old. <laughs> this smells like an old book. We're gonna go ahead and pull her apart here. And I don't know, right away I see like a spiral ring on the bottom of that. I don't know if that's like uh, some old mold or... Oh, that smells just wretched. It smells like Somebody that has really bad, nasty breath, to be honest with you. Let's put it nicely. That's vile, man. Oof. I want to put that wrapper back in the original bag because that's, that's not only bad. That was bad like 30 years ago. You got to figure this is a 
a 72 ration that's 44 years old the 68 that's 48 years old so get up on 50 years uh, I think what we're gonna do here we're going to first of all get some hot water for this coffee going and we're gonna try one of these coffees and even though we're not going to physically try this we'll definitely cut it open and take a look at it because I know that's not good probably hasn't been good for a couple decades or many decades okay so we have the coffee blast in the microwave or the water blast in the microwave for the coffee and I can see the just like little brown stuff all over the thing it has no smell it's kind of odd now this is made even this long ago by the Oregon freeze dry company Oregon freeze dry foods incorporated uh, so that's kind of funny uh, let's go ahead and rip this thing open and see what the deal is so as notches on top is rip it notches and it also says the inside bag is open this bag so delaminated it's still hard for it to open up I'm gonna go ahead and slice it just a little bit lower here we'll try to get into it yeah there we go I've seen some guys do reviews on these Steve did a review on this but it was the newer version of this in the plastic bag and everything's a little different look at this guy smell inside the bag it smells I don't know, kind of like a little bit of spices maybe and it says the bag is open so let's maybe do this I got you the screen. I just heard the water ding for the coffee. And man, look at that guy. It looks like just the way it looks, or just some kind of mold on it. What's going on there? It's like all. Oh, is it focus on that or not? I can see some peas and stuff in there. I can see you actually better on the camera than I can in person. It's super crumbly. I mean, freezer that stuff doesn't really mold, but this smells like a 1990s uh, beef patty. So I don't know. Well, let's uh, go and do the coffee, and we're going to come back, and we're going to put some water in this bad boy and see what happens. It says you can eat it dry. I don't know how brave a person could be. It smells kind of rough. Tell you what. As soon as I put that in my mouth, you could taste the instant beef taste. It tastes real normal. It's actually pretty good, to be honest with you. Let's go ahead and uh, get in some water and see. All right, so it says a half a canteen cup. I don't know how much that is. I have eight ounces of water here. We're just going to start adding some in. It says you might have to add a little more. Make sure you're in the shot. All right. Let's get her spoon out. And it smells really good as soon as I pour that in there. Like a real strong uh, beef bouillon.
You know, this freeze dry stuff is just remarkable that after that long, just the smell coming out of this is amazing. I guess we'll uh, fold that up a little bit. We'll let it sit. It says five minutes. We'll let it sit a little bit longer and we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. Let me get a couple glasses here. These glasses for this cocoa and tea instead of mugs. You can actually see through these glasses a lot better and see what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and do our coffee instant. It feels nice and pliable. We'll probably have to try to knock it down. It feels like it's pretty full. Let's go ahead and slice this guy open. I see focus. You know, focus, maybe. All right. Let's slice her open. It's such a fine powder. See, everything now is coffee that's freeze dried, which just might be freeze dried too. And it's a lot bigger chunks. I'm just having trouble coming out of there. I always get angry at people when they fumble stuff around on camera and here I'm doing it. I'm trying to get this old ass coffee out of here. Okay, there we go. And it's just super fine ground, super fine powder. It doesn't smell bad, it smells like regular coffee. It doesn't smell old or anything. And we're going to do this and try not to spill water everywhere. It's roughly eight ounces, a little bit over, but that'll be okay. I'm gonna go and stir this guy up. Then we have our cocoa beverage powder. Now we could have made the the mocha where you mix them together, but for this old and special of a ration, maybe we won't do that. And for the most part, it looks like somebody stored this pretty well. All the powders aren't all caked up. Is I think that that bar there, I think the egg whites is what uh, did that in. All right, there's that guy. And that was, just to refresh, that was the vanilla, yeah, vanilla cream bar. So the egg whites or whatever cream they had in it, didn't fare too good. So this is a lot more powder. This is also eight ounces of water. We have a little under that, which that's fine. It's just hot chocolate. Do that. We'll get our spoon here. Mix that up. Never had hot chocolate this old. I guess a lot of people haven't. But uh, we're about to see what it's like. It's a lot more powder to stir up. One thing's for sure. In the late 60s, early 70s, there wasn't any aspartame that I know of. And you're almost guaranteed real, real sugar. 
big chunk of chocolate stuck on the spoon. Really hard to mix up. Okay, there's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a couple things here. We're gonna look at our sugar, we're gonna look at our cream substitute. Our sugar we could use in the coffee. We're gonna dump a little bit out here to see how it looks as far as color wise and see if it held up over the years, and it did. Looks and smells really good. We'll do a little sugar in there because that's some pretty dark coffee. I'll leave that right there. Maybe there's just another little stir. And then our coffee creamer, or cream substitute, we're gonna cut that open and we're just gonna pour some out and see how it looks here. Usually these don't, these don't work out too good. You can see it's just all clumped up in the little chunks. Oh man, it has that, the same bad breath smell that that thing has. Oh, you ever out somewhere and somebody has like, I don't know if it's a rotten tooth or some kind of sinus problem, they're breathing on you. And that's <laughs> just how that smells. Nasty. We'll leave that out there for display. I guess probably the best thing to do with that. And our main is looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and take this guy off. And stir it back up. And it's kind of mushy, but you know, what do you expect? I'll go ahead and do that. And let's just go ahead and dump her out on the tray. Pretty much 95% of it's out. And got to lower my hand. All right. And it looks kind of like it's already come out of something or somebody. Big ball of stuff, man. That's a lot of stuff. And you can see the peas in it. And what is this big black thing here? Is that a mushroom or a piece of beef? I think it's just a piece of beef. See little pieces of potato in it. Some corn. And a pea. And I'm not really sure what that is. I guess it's a piece of potato that's not hydrated all the way. And then we'll get a piece of slab of beef in it. I already ate a piece of it dry, so how bad can it be, right? It smells slightly old, but not bad. It's not bad. It really isn't. Actually, it's pretty good. I just feel like I want to keep eating that, but man, I don't know. It's kind of old. But real nice, strong beef broth flavor to it. You can actually taste the vegetables in it, the peas and stuff. Tastes like something was made this year. Very odd. Let's go ahead and take a drink of the coffee and see. That's something floating. That's a piece of corn from using that spoon. <laughs> Not too bad. It'd be better with creamer in it, but obviously. Wouldn't it be better with that creamer in it? 
Our cocoa looks very sugary. It smells kind of old. It has that slight bad breath kind of smell to it. So damn thick too, holy crap. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Oh man, the taste of that. It's the same smell as that, the bad breath smell. Oh, must have been some kind of milk product in that hot cocoa. That's vile. Oh, this thing. Oh, look at that guy. Oh. Guys, I'll try about anything, but that's, especially with that big round thing on the bottom, that's going to kill you. But everything else, I mean, the coffee and the, the main is really good. Uh, we do want to check out this toothpick situation here. And so it says, use pointed end to clean gently between teeth and the flat side next to the tooth and gum. Shoot blunt ends, separate fibers, then use the brush teeth. That's a uh, pre toothpick, I guess. Well, let's chew the blunt end. Tell you what, pretty rough to brush your teeth with that. I guess you could. I mean, sure, it's better than nothing, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would work. Put that over there. But that's it, guys. That's all for the 1968 to 1972 menu number seven beef stew with a Vietnam era long range patrol or L R R P long range reconnaissance MRE or ration. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.